Hello everybody, welcome to episode 51 of Boxing with Ben. In this episode I'm going to explore Joe Joyce's boxing style in a bit more detail, specifically focusing on what I think he should add to his um, defensive arsenal in order to go from what I believe is a very good boxer to a great boxer. Um, my opinion on Joe Joyce has already been heavily outlined in my Usyk versus Joyce prediction video, so for the sake of people who have seen that one, I'm not going to outline here what I believe um, are Joe's kind of strengths and weaknesses as a boxer, but a basic summary, you know, he's slow, he's methodical, he's calculated, he's got a granite chin, he's got a lot of power, um, but his footwork and head movement are lacklustre, um, and there are definite holes in his game that he needs to improve on, but as I say, he has the athletic calibre, conditioning, um, stamina, hand... Uh, power hand power i'm just looking for the word power there guys um he has the power and he has the chin to to really you know drive home um and the thing is right i say this to people all the time when they talk about joyce okay it's about working with what you've got rather than kind of criticizing what you haven't got um and trying to address it because sometimes there is just a biological uh, factor about you as a person that means that a certain skill or facet um, of somebody else's game just won't work in yours because you just can't carry it out. Um, so with Joyce, I think he is just naturally a big framed guy with you know a shitload of power. Um, I don't think trying to improve his hand speed and footwork is necessarily the best bet with him because I just think that that would involve a fundamental rewriting of everything he's learned in boxing and doesn't appeal to his stance and his you know his build and so what i'm going to suggest is just two improvements he can make um to his um, defensive arsenal that i believe would you know revolutionize his boxing um i know that's quite a loaded term and maybe not quite as strong as that but certainly would help him and would sort of springboard him up to that next level uh but as i said you know refer to that usick joyce video but i do rate joyce as a boxer i just think there are holes in his game and what this is going to do, this isn't going to patch up the holes, but instead it's just going to pull together what he's already got. Um, and it will really, really suit his style. So without further ado, I'm going to jump on the bag. Enjoy the video, guys. All right, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at how Joyce boxes here and now. So as I said, Joyce is a stiff jabber. Um, he's very powerful in his crosses and his hooks. He's slow, he's methodical, he's calculative, his stamina is good. So his jabs, okay, he either has a snappy jab, okay, driven in with a lot of power, as I say, you know, it's a power jab. He doesn't uh, sort of pepper jabs, you know, it's a snappy, okay. He steps into it, he gives it that snap. And that's the tool that he used to break Daniel Dubois's um, orbital bone. So it's a powerful jab. Um, the second thing he does is he skewers his body jabs down. So rather than, for example, fainting to the head, and come down to the body, okay, or just firing it diagonally down, he actually skewers the shot, uh, like so. I'm trying to be like slow and methodical, trying to mimic Joyce's style, but he'll be sort of bodding around his opponent, and then he'll spit that jab in. Oftentimes, just having his right hand by his chin for defense at that point, uh, but he's not really known for his defense. I'd say Joyce, his only real defense is kind of slow bobbing. He'll bob the way out of shots sometimes. Um, and sometimes he'll adopt a high guard or of course he'll adopt um, a guard that protects the body from body shots. But he's very happy to take shots on the chin as his chin is granite um, and has kind of accepted as a slower fighter that he will get caught from time to time but can fall back on that chin. Okay, so um, the other thing that Joyce is particularly good at is picking his shots. So if his opponent's hurt, he won't just, you know, start flurrying, okay? But he will pick his shots. So if he sees an opening, you know, he'll take it, and then he'll see them walking back. He won't rush in, he'll just slowly start to pick them off. You know, working with the opponent, adapting as they adapt. And as they start to work him out, you know, he'll switch it up. Joyce is a skilled boxer, okay? There's no doubt about that, but, but, but. You probably think, who am I to say this about him? Well, I'm an armchair critic, you know? I don't have Joyce's skill, but that doesn't mean I can't see improvements that can be made in his game. Just because I can't do something doesn't mean I can't conceptualize it. And there are two things that I think would add to this really nicely, okay? And would complement his style. 
and they're drawn from the mighty George Foreman. Specifically looking at Foreman's um, twilight years of his career when he became World Heavyweight Champion at 45. Looking at skills that he deployed, because I see a lot of parallels between an older Foreman and a younger Joyce. Joyce is Foreman, but, you know, I feel like his engine um, possibly is better uh, just because of the age differential. Obviously, Foreman was 45 when he was using the style that he was using, where Joyce is younger. Um, but, you know, Joyce has an incredible amateur and Olympic pedigree. So let's not I don't understand the discussion and points regarding, you know, he's a, he's a terrible boxer. I mean, people like to jump on anyone in boxing, as I've discussed a real issue in boxing in a previous video is as soon as you know, you show any chink or glimmer of weakness or you don't like an opponent's personality or a whole host of things, you just get called a bum and written off in boxing. That's just toxic boxing culture these days. But okay, he is a good bo boxer, but there are improvements that can be made. And I'm going to draw these, as I say, from an older George Foreman who I believe uh, utilized a style that would suit Joyce just down to the ground. Joyce has a powerful right hand. The first technique I want to draw from Foreman is the utilization of an overhand left to pull the guard down of an opponent to sneak that right through. So something that I don't see uh, a lot of from Joyce, okay, is um, the utilization of punches in order to get your glove into the opponent's range um, and when you're drawing back to then drop their guard uh, whilst they're in a high guard. So as an example, okay, imagine an opponent is shelling up, okay, and Joyce is kind of slowly and methodically landing that jab. Well, not that kind of body jab, actually more of a, but he's landing the jab, okay. Few right hands, okay, hooks, right, etc. etc. Okay, but they shell up, okay, they adopt a high guard. The way I would get around this is either with a left hook, okay, or an overhand left, okay. When that punch lands, what you want to do, okay, if you're in Joyce's position, is drag the guard down. Use your hand to pull that guard apart and drive that right cross through, like so, okay? I think this pull counter is great because Joyce is an incredibly powerful puncher and his right hand is his money shot. You know, that right cross is, is savage. It's up there with that stiff jab in terms of how important it is to his arsenal. As I say, you know, the right cross or the right overhand. And that pull, okay, will just separate the guard. He's a strong guy. Um, he's athletic, he's usually bigger than his opponent, he can afford to bully fighters and he can afford to wrench their guard down on the return, mask it, you know, with that punch, with that left hook or that left overhand, as big George Foreman did in his older years, and then bang, you know, crack them with that, that right cross or that right overhand. The second part, and this is iconic, um, older George Foreman, also used sometimes by Derek Chisora, also used sometimes... Um, by Nikolai Valoev, okay, cross arm guard, okay, I really, really think a cross arm guard would benefit Joe Joyce, okay, firstly, for that reason of bullying people, so, for example, if he blocks, okay, blocks the shot, he can use this, this blockade, to push people back, okay, so he can, like, push someone back to the ropes, and then hit them with some hooks, okay, so it's a great one for domineering opponents, you know, having that almost like a shield um, that you can kind of like drive forwards, okay, into a person to push them back. The second thing is, okay, his chin is granite, but it isn't untouchable. It's possible that his chin could get cracked, but this will keep his head protected, okay, when he's in there against some of the biggest punches in the division, which he's going to come to face. Anthony Joshua, Andy Ruiz Jr., uh, you know, uh, Dillian White, okay? He's going to need to protect his chin against people like that. Um, and I think this is a great way of him being able to do that, but without having to rely on reflexes, agility, speed, okay? He's never going to be a guy who's quick on his feet, you know, head movement. He's not Roy Jones Jr., right? That'll never be his style, okay? He's a big dude, 
He's athletic, but he's heavy, and I think he's built as a strong, slow man, okay? So, he needs to work with that. And this cross arm guard allows him to stay in there and protect his head, okay? But, throw those powerful hooks, okay? Etc. Etc. Okay, I really, really think he'd benefit from a cross arm guard because he can stay in tight, protect his head, and slug with overhands, hooks, you know, crosses, and do what he does best, which is you know, demolish people. He's a juggernaut. He's got so much power, and this allows him to stay in there without too much of a worry about his chin being cracked against a giant puncher such as Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, etc. 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 I actually find it really interesting with the cross arm guard that I typically saw it in depression era fighters. Um, a lot of the old tapes that I've seen um, of depression era fighters, it seems to be more commonly used um, in that era amongst the kind of bruises and the juggernauts and the pugilists. Um, you see less of it these days and I don't know why. I understand it looks like an awkward position to be in with crossed arms in a boxing context. But the Philly shell looks like an awkward position to be in, but it works fantastically if you train it. And it's the same with the cross-arm guard. You know, it's, it's all about training and about looking at your own circumstances and its utility to you. And as I say to me, when I look at Joe Joyce, I see the utility there. Uh, I believe it was kind of popularised by, oh, is it Gene Fullman or Gene Fuller? Gene Fullman, Gene Fuller. I believe it's Gene Fullman. Um, I have seen tapes of the guy. I saw him using it because I kind of started to develop my own off some of the uh, the tapes that I watched. I don't use it often, um, but you know, a cross arm guard can be useful um, for the reasons that I've kind of mentioned in this. For the same reasons as it would be useful to Joyce. Um, but um, yeah, it seems to be popular uh, kind of in the Depression era, uh, possibly because it kind of became popularized at that time. So it was a new idea it was a new concept in terms of you know seeing it on the, on the grand stage and athletes using it in the boxing context and maybe its popularity has just faded out over time as other styles have kind of come to the fore but yeah um without further ado i'm just going to do a bit of bag work in which i show those two concepts threaded together um in a bit of bag work just to show you kind of the direction that i think joyce should take uh with regards to his style moving on uh, and shout out to Joe Joyce, by the way. I'll be rooting for you in your bout against Alexander Usyk uh, as a fellow Brit. Bring it home, brother. <laughs> All right, then. I hope you guys found that useful. Um, I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. I hope you enjoyed the conversations. Feel free to hit me up in the comments. 
um, just to discuss what you think of kind of Joyce incorporating these two techniques more heavily into his style about sort of the uh, older George Foreman comparison and the fact that I believe um, you know that Joyce should um, adopt some of Foreman's techniques and methods I'd love to see George Foreman train Joe Joyce I mean what a power relationship that would be you know between coach and trainee that would just be like Wow, yeah, Foreman has a lot to teach Joe, and I think Foreman would benefit from the experience of teaching someone. I think he'd really appreciate producing a champion, um, so that would be an incredible alignment if it ever came to be. But yeah, um, apologies if the demonstration wasn't on point. Um, I'm trying to mimic Joe Joyce's style, and it's not my own. I'm a lot more elusive and evasive. I switch stances, you'll notice in my videos. So I tend to rely on hand speed, accuracy and footwork more so, which is exactly what Joyce is not. Um, I don't have Joyce's power. Um, but I tried to mimic the style as best I could just to give you an idea of what I was essentially trying to get across in terms of, uh, you know, what I personally um, would hope to see in the future for Joe Joyce. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, take care, keep boxing and stay safe. All right then. Bye guys.